So the sponsor of this video postponed very last minute. So we're kind of left high and dry because that's how we pay for these videos and all the editing to cut the boots and shoes in half. So I thought I'd show you the Clayton wallet that we make by hand here in the shop. We don't use any sewing machines. It's all sewn by hand with two needles and a single piece of really thick thread. And the coolest thing about this wallet and why I think it's so popular is this is a six card pocket wallet with a big old cash slot in the back here. And this whole thing is put together with just two lines of stitches. This stitch line right here and this right here. And it's one of my more proud designs. I really, really like this one because of how complex the wallet is, but how simple the design is. And we use the absolute best veg tan leather, tan of the United States by Wicked and Craig. And these come with a lifetime warranty and all the thousands of wallets we've sold over the last few years. We've only had like one or two return for repairs. We get them fixed up, ship them back out. And that's the benefit of using the highest quality materials and the best techniques to make your wallets. It's an upfront investment, but they last forever and ever. So check these out, we link in the description and it's a good way to support us. Uh, Christmas is coming up, makes for a great gift. So thank you guys for all the support and check them out below. A lot of people don't realize that the majority of Red Wing boots that are sold are not their main heritage line that most people, especially with this channel, know and recognize. The vast majority of their boots are sold through their work boot line and especially their Irish setter line. It's like half work, half hunting. And in every single one of the Red Wing videos we've done, there's always questions like, uh, are the Irish setters as good as Red Wing? Are they built the same way? Are they cheap Chinese made junk? Are they high quality? Like people want to know if Irish setters live up to the Red Wing standard or if they've sold out by moving their production overseas, is it worth the money? Did Red Wing sell out? That's what we're gonna try to answer. So to understand this and what people mean by sell out, you kind of have to understand their history, which goes back a lot farther than a lot of people would assume because in 1905, the Red Wing Shoe Company was founded in Red Wing, Minnesota and started making work boots. Then in the 1920s, the Red Wing Shoe Company introduced the Outing Boots, which was an 18 inch high boot, first designed for hunters. And then this, you know, back east, hunting's different than over here in the west. It's more flatland hunting, more bird and fowl hunting. And so in the mid 1930s, Red Wing started to develop its first upland hunting boot made specifically for bird hunting. Then in the 1950s, after the success of their hunting boot, they introduced a nine inch lace up leather boot for sportsmen called the 854, which was made for upland bird hunting and other hunters who spent a lot of the time in their autumn days in the woods and fields of North America, especially the eastern side. Then shortly after the world famous 877 8 inch mock toe was added to the lineup and was used as a taller hunting boot. And then by the 1960s, the Irish setter boots were quickly adopted by American workers because of how comfortable they were and how well they were built. Then in the 1970s where these boots really hit their peak because people were wearing to their job sites after work on their sporting events like hunting and hiking and stuff like that. They included all these new materials in the 70s that include the high waterproof kangaroo hide that I wish they'd still make boots out of and the Vibram soles, the double layer leather, which was all this stuff was cutting edge construction technology for that time for this style of boot. And then over the next couple of decades, they definitely died off a little bit. And then by the 1990s, the Irish setter hunting line was expanded to 14 different styles and it was definitely positioned more towards hunting at this time. Then in 2003, Irish setter introduces the wing shooter family, six new boots specifically designed for upland hunting, walking long distances in search of pheasants, quails, grouse, any other upland bird. And even though this new line had a lot of great success and was very popular in 2011, Red Wing opens up its first plant in China to meet the growing demand of these new models and all the expansion they've done over the last few decades. And they started making the vast majority of the Irish setter boot line out of factories based in China, Cambodia, and Vietnam. Then in 2017, they expanded even further with uh, some safety toe options for workers. And fast forward to 2023, and basically every single Irish setter boot that we've seen is not made in the United States. It's all made overseas in those three countries we talked about. So very classic story of a popular Matusa brand made in the United States brand where they moved the production overseas to meet that new demand for their product, to also drop the price, increase margins, and to continue to expand the brand at potentially the expense of the quality of the product. Just like 99% of the brands that have done this where they move stuff to foreign mass production and everything just drops in quality, and that's what we're gonna try to figure out. So what are these boots? Well, the brand is Irish Setter. The style is the Wing Shooter 838. They weigh one pound, 14 ounces. They retail for $210 and they're made in Vietnam. And the way the Irish Setter positions this boot 
is the wing shooter waterproof leather hunting boot has dominated the field since 1950. This is the original Irish setter boot and it gets better with every upgrade. Made from beautiful full grain leather, it features iconic white wedge sole. The ultra dry waterproof system keeps your feet dry in wet weather. A comfortable steel shank in the midsole gives you additional underfoot support as well as more stable footing. It is surprisingly lightweight and extremely comfortable so you can wear it anywhere and go all day. There's some good claims in there. They're saying that it's better and better each iteration dating all the way back to the 50s. We'll see if that's true. And if you missed us rebuilding a pair of these on the Rose Anvil Builds channel, my buddy Jay, who's a paraglider, we he wore these out doing that. And so we upgraded it, added a bunch of features to it, made it a really fun video. So go watch that, I'll put it in the description. So let's start judging this boot, starting with the leather first, because this leather is pretty unique because we don't see very many true waterproof leathers. Uh, it's just hard to do. Usually it's silicone infuse it and the, a lot of times brands just end up using a waterproof lining on the inside instead of the waterproof leather. But this is actually waterproof leather, which is really cool. It's 2.2 millimeters thick. It's a tumble leather, so it's nice and soft and supple. And it definitely does have a fake embossed print in the top layer. You can see because of how repeating and consistent the pattern is. And it definitely has a little bit of pigment in it. But I don't think either of those two things are a negative for the actual quality of the leather. It's just more of a taste thing. But it is a little on the thin side. That two to 2.2 millimeters is a little bit thinner for like a heavy duty, reliable, dependable boot but maybe they're going a little bit thinner just to make it more comfortable. And I'm assuming this is not made from the tannery that Red Wing owns. I'm guessing this is made in, in Vietnam or, or China or something or some other foreign tannery because it just doesn't seem like it's the same quality of leather. But we ran it through some of the tests and it did perform pretty well because the puncture test took 178 pounds to puncture through which is a really good score. I think it's the third best that we've ever done. And it feels like a pretty decent leather because you, you can see there's plenty of grain in there. It has a nice full leather feel. It's not foamy and dry. It has a lot of conditioner worked into it. So it seems like it's a decent leather, especially for that $210 price range. Then if we look at the inside, this is where that ultra dry waterproof lining comes into play because the really unique thing this boot does that most boots don't do is that it has the waterproof leather and the waterproof lining. And most boots only have one or the other. And the benefit of that is even though your leather's waterproof, water is still gonna seep in through the threads and get to the inside of your boot, no matter how waterproof the leather is. And so having that waterproof lining on the inside is gonna prevent any of that water from seeping all the way into your socks, especially if you're walking around in like damp grass hunting. But we wanted to do the waterproof test to see if it actually was waterproof. So we dunked it in the tank for 10, 15 minutes and it is 100% waterproof. It did not let any water into the inside of the boot. But this is a common issue with a lot of these boots that have the waterproof lining is water will seep in through the leather, but it stops at the lining. And so you end up with this cavity on the inside where it's, water is trapped. And Cass, after he did the test, he said it took like 10 minutes for all the water to drain out. And then as for the actual lining material, it's just a typical fabric liner, nothing special special, nothing horrible. But one thing I wish that they would have done different is because this is a hunting boot, it's made for hiking and walking long days. I wish there would have been some kind of counter cover on the inside, because just like any sneaker where you've worn through the heel, the same thing's going to happen with this. Your heel just inevitably wears through that really thin fabric. And the problem with that is that waterproof barrier is right behind that that lining fabric. And so once you wear through that fabric, it's only a matter of time before you wear through the waterproof lining. And now this double waterproof boot is no longer even remotely waterproof. But it's a it's a tough thing to solve because if you sewed an internal counter cover on the inside, you'd be sewing through the waterproof lining. So that's why we always end up seeing this flaw with, with waterproof boots. And one thing that's worth mentioning about this upper is on the other pair, the heel stay was, was not sewn on all the way. The bottom thread from the bobbin clearly ran out halfway through the stitch. And so the back stays like flapping off and peeling off. And that's to me just a sign of the difference between the quality control from the US compared to the more mass produced Vietnamese produced Irish setters. It seems like you see a lot more of the flaws like that in more affordable boots from foreign mass production. Um, but I'm sure if you sent it back to Red Wing, they'd replace it, but we had that issue. So I wanted to mention it. Then to the midsole, this, and this midsole really surprised me because it is a true dual density midsole. This, this top layer that's maybe a three eighths of an inch thick that runs the full 
pole length is a little bit harder at 50 shore A to give you a little more support while still giving you some squish. And this wedge underneath the heel is softer at 30 shore A. So you get a little of that squish at the toe, but even more squish at the heel for when you're heel toeing around, hiking around. And I was surprised it was a, a true dual density. For 210 bucks, you know, even, even sneakers, there's so many brands that claim they're dual density, but they're just not. And then on top of that, you have this rubber skin as the outsole. You know, usually in wedge soles like this, you see only a single layer of, of single density, like rubber foam as the outsole, but this has the dual density and this rubber slip sole and it's sewed on, sewn on at the toe. And so you really get the best of all the worlds in this one outsole. So I actually really like this outsole construction. The really the only downside of it and the flaw of this style is it can delaminate because there's so many more layers. And once you wear through some of that rubber and you get into that softer foam, it really wears in a, in a hurry but it is fairly easy to resole because I did integrate this rubber slip sole. And then as for the construction, this was one where I wasn't sure if the Irish setters were gonna be true, like traditional construction, like they're made to look to be. And I'm 90% sure this is a true Goodyear welt. You know, even with Thorough Goods for 50, 60 bucks more, it's a synthetic welt. It's rare to see a leather welt in a $210 boot. Maybe uh, Thursday's the only other brand that I can think of off the top of my head that does it. And the benefit of that is it's just gonna last longer. It doesn't split when it gets really cold and fragile. It doesn't wear out nearly as fast. The cobbler won't have to replace it, so your, your resoles are cheaper. And it just looks nicer. It's a more traditional way of making a boot. And so, so far, it does look like it's a pretty decent boot. You know, I'm not a big fan of synthetic linings and all this other stuff, but we'll really see when we get it cut in half because a lot of times these brands, especially in this price range, all the price savings are on the inside. So let's cut it in half. I also forgot to say it's Mocktober. And so if you're wondering like, wow, that's two, two or three mock toes in a row. Well, it's because it's Mocktober. We cut apart mock toe boots all through October. We've thought about doing a shirt again for Mocktober. Um, so let me know if you want us to do a shirt because I love this series. It's, it's probably my favorite series because I love mock toe boots. There's so much BS in the market and it allows us to, to hyper fixate on one style of boot to compare all these other brands and price ranges to. I love it. So let's see what's inside. <sighs> Terrible opening. Unfortunately, not nearly as similar to the originals as I'd hoped. You know, I was really hoping to see some some natural materials in here, some leather, some, you know, just some of some of the higher quality materials. You know, it is only 200 bucks, but this is far from the original style, where it's all leather insides and all the higher quality components. And so that, that little thing that they said of like it gets better and better every year, it's that's not really true. At least not from a durability and quality standpoint. Maybe from comfort and some other angles, it's better, but. You know, it's it's pretty basic on the inside. It's, it's built about, about like any other a waterproof hiking boot that you get from Vietnam or China. You know, you get the lasting board, you got lots of filler materials, some foam. You do have that steel shank in there. Uh, it is truly good you're welted and it is a it's real leather welt. But it's, it's really, if you just looked at this cross section without the name, you wouldn't really know where to place it. There's not a whole lot you can point to that, say, that says, oh yeah, this is a, a Red Wing sister brand, or this is a Irish setter, or this is a heritage boot um, modernized. It's just a regular boot for this price range with mostly synthetics. It is gonna be really comfortable, and it's gonna be comfortable right off the bat, and maybe that's part of the value of this boot for people. But there are a couple of components that do show the heritage of the brand because it is a true leather welt. It is a true Goodyear welt. It is truly double waterproofed, even though it doesn't fully work all the time. And it's gonna be easier to resole because of how they built this boot. And so the maybe 90% like every other boot, and then maybe five or 10%, a little bit of heritage and homage to uh, the Red Wing brand. So is it worth the price? 
Well, I, I think you could honestly get a pretty comparable boot for 175 bucks, but you're probably not gonna get that leather welt and some of those, those unique things that we talked about. I think it's gonna do the job just fine. You know, I think it's gonna be a decent hiking boot or work boot. It's gonna be comfortable. The leather's decent enough for $210. You know, it's maybe a little bit steep, but, but not much at all. Did Red Wing sell out by moving their production to Vietnam for the Irish setters or China or, whatever, or Cambo Cambodia? Well, they, they definitely aren't representative of the heritage line. They're a lot more like their work boots with a more modern way of making boots and shoes. This seems to be just a decent $200 hunting boot. And if you remove the name, I think most people would be fine with it regardless. But if you like the OG Irish setters and you thought that's what you were getting with this with the better internal components, you might be a little bit disappointed and you might think that they sold out because they kind of did to some degree. Anytime uh, any brand moves their production overseas, cheapens the materials, drops the price, a lot of people consider that textbook selling out. And so if that's your perspective on it, then they, they definitely did. And to be honest, it's a little bit my perspective too, because I wish they were, they were made in the United States and I wish they were made better. And as for how it ranks on the Mocktober board, well, the other two are absolutely terrible. So right at the top of this year's Mocktober board, and this is where it ranks on the overall three-year Mocktober board. So let me know what you think and what your experience has been in the Irish setters. Do you wish they were built like the originals? Do you like how they are? Do you like the price points? Do you think they sold out? Let me know what you guys think, and thank you so much for your support. See ya.